This is my FT60, a Yezu amateur radio that's dual band, 2 meters and 70 centimeters. I consider it an excellent choice both as your first radio and as your only handheld radio if it has what you need. Everything is a compromise and when I say has what you need I want to emphasize that this radio is basic. It does not have GPS, APRS, D-Star or wires and I don't use those so this radio has everything I need. It weighs a little over 13 ounces. It has a very robust case, a very stout antenna and a clip for your pocket that I think will hold under everything normal people can throw at it. The radio has an on-off knob at the top instead of a button on the front so when it's on your belt you can switch it on without looking at the radio and adjust the volume so that you can hear whatever's being said. The outside knob adjusts the frequency if you want to if you have it on VFO or it adjusts uh, the memory channels if you're on memory and another feature that I consider outstanding is it has a little dial here on the outside of the uh, knob that does your frequency and memory and this dial adjusts the squelch so you don't need to go looking anywhere on the radio for menus and buttons to push for basic on off and changing uh, your memory channels. You can enter uh, frequencies and your memory channels directly from the keypad on front and since it doesn't have wires, you never accidentally turn that feature on. That's one of the most aggravating situations I know. All the hams that I know, even when they don't have a Yezu with wires, know how to turn it off because it's the most common mistake I see when I'm at an event. Somebody will end up with having pushed their wires button and they don't know how to turn it off. I do not like wires. I'm sure lots of people get a ton of use out of it, and I don't know who they are. The FT60, as with all radios, is a compromise. It lacks a lot of the features of the high-end Yezus. It weighs a little over 13 ounces on my kitchen scale, while the Oshin weighs in at about 9.5 ounces. Part of that is because of the extra weight on an on a better case than the ocean. Uh, you'll also see that the antennas are more ro the antenna is more robust on this than on the ocean. The FT60 is, well they're both good radios as your first radio. I consider the Yezu FT60 as a climax radio, the radio that you can buy and have that as your last radio and use it at every event you go to. The Oshin, I'm not sure, has the quality to last uh, as long as the FT60. However, having said that, let me say nothing is perfect. I got this radio for free from a friend of mine because it was broken. It wouldn't transmit or receive. You couldn't change frequencies. It was locked in on one setting and wouldn't move. For $35, you can send it back to Yezu and have the factory determine what's wrong and if you choose to have it repaired, they'll fix it for you with the $35 taken into account. I sent it back at my expense and a 13 cent diode had failed. A 13 cent part had wrecked the radio. So I had it fixed. The $35 covered the repair. They charged me 13 cents for the part and then they sent it back at my expense. So I have a $160 radio for about $50 in postage, repairs, and parts. The antenna gets a lot of complaints on eHAM, and I've, they recommend getting another antenna, and they recommend several that are from 15 to 18, 18 inches long, and that have about this size in diameter. Years ago, I bought one of those for another radio that I have, and 15 to 18 inches is long. It's When you have it on your belt, the antenna sticks up in your armpit, it sticks up in your back, it sticks up in your chest. 
and other people complained because they were afraid it was going to put their eye out. I had the radio in the back seat of my car driving down the street in downtown and some knucklehead in a Porsche pulled in front of me and I had to slam on my brakes and the radio with that longer antenna slid off the seat into the footwell and snapped the antenna. I have confidence that this antenna, if I dropped it from the back seat into my footwell, that this antenna would be robust enough that it would withstand that fall. I'm not sure in my experience with the other antenna on the other radio that I got my money's worth in better reception. The problem with others may be that they're in ranges where repeaters are a long way off. I live in the San Francisco Bay Area and we're covered with repeaters. So finding a repeater you can hit has never been an issue for me. My recommendation of this radio as your only radio and as your first radio is wholehearted. As I said, it doesn't have features that you may end up needing. There are some people who want D-Star. I don't know anybody who uses wires. I know lots of people in the Bay Area who use APRS and have their radio on all the time with a GPS unit tracking their location and reporting it online. If that's what you like, this radio won't do it. If you want a robust radio that will withstand the rigors of any event you can throw at it, then I suggest the FT60 as a basic, usable, 2 meter, 70 centimeter handheld radio.